Hello there and welcome to another American Civil War epic battle report. So today I'm playing through another scenario from the Glory Hallelujah supplement that Warlord Games um, produce. Um, this is the Battle of Iuka, which was fought in September 1862 down outside the uh, town of Iuka in Mississippi. Uh, so the background to this was that the Confederates under Major General Sterling Price had occupied Iuka, the town of Iuka, and Grant, the Union commander, basically perceived that Price had overextended himself and dispatched a force to, uh, to crush Price and his smaller force. Um, so the Union troops advanced in two um, uh, mutually unsupporting columns, and then basically Price saw his chance to pounce, basically, and uh, alerted by his reconnaissance, he sent out two brigades to meet Ro uh, one of the columns under Major General Rosecrans. Um, so this is that battle for, for, uh, in, in, in the supplement. So what I'll do, I'll quickly I'll go over the forces and the scenario, and then uh, we'll get on with it. Right, so we'll start with the Confederate Army under Major General Price, who's down here. And it's down there. So basically, um, the Confederates are attacking today. So their Ayuk is kind of that way. They're pushing out to, to meet Rosecrans's column. Um, so he's got two brigades with him. He's got Martin's, uh, sorry, Herbert's brigade, which is at the front here, and then Martin's brigade at the at the back. Now, these are quite large brigades. Um, I mean, there's six regiments here for. For Herbert's brigade plus two artillery batteries and then four for Herbert. So what I've done is, sorry for Martin, so what I've done is rather than you do the usual re-roll for the general where they can attach themselves to a brigade commander to get a re-roll, um, I'm actually going to use the commander-in-chief rule today which basically means he's got his own um, command rating, they're all command rating of eight and he can basically order troops around as well. So I think because they're going to be so spread out um, if you think about that's Herbert over there, if he's trying to order down to here They'll get they'll get some modifiers um, for the distance. So yeah, I'm going to make um, get price involved, and I think that's probably good because he wants to be aggressive for the uh, for the game. So we've got six infantry regiments for Herbert's brigade. One of those is light infantry, just so they get the uh, they get a sharpshooter rule. So reroll one missed hit in firing, and then as I said, uh, Martin's brigade is four regiments. Um, so I've given um, price the aggressive uh, rule. So just to Basically, he is being aggressive. He wants to attack Rosecrans. Um, and the aggressive rule basically means he gets plus one to his command rating when he's ordering units to charge. So I think that was kind of um, reflective of uh, the situation. So, uh, yeah, so that's um, the Confederate Army. So let's go and have a look at the what they're facing with, with Rosecrans. OK, so over to the Union Army under Rosecrans, who's down here. Um, now, I don't, I'm not a historian. Um, but I've obviously read a few things around the various commanders and the battles. So my understanding of Rosecrans was he was very popular with his men. Um, he was quite a courageous commander, did particularly well in the Western Theatre. Um, he won the Battle of Iuka, so there you go. We'll see what happens today. Uh, but, he, but he was quite quarrelsome. He used to, didn't get on with his superiors. I think he had a big uh, issue with Grant. Uh, they didn't get on very well, so that affected his career. Um, so for today, I've made him headstrong. Again, he's going to be a commander-in-chief. So he can order troops around, units around. Um, the headstrong rule basically means he gets plus one to his command rating if he's the first to order units. Okay, so just trying to give him something that reflects maybe his character. Um, and we've got two brigades, one under Sanborn. Again, these are quite large. We've got five regiments there plus a, a, a battery of artillery. And we've got Sullivan coming up in March column with, uh, again, five regiments and a battery of artillery. Uh, Rosecrans has got a third brigade that's that's a little bit a little bit behind, um, and they, you know the Union did outnumber the Confederates um, at Oyuka, so but they won't come on until around turn three, so Price here has really got to try and get us get a spit on and try and get up the field, and engage with the Union, um, to before that third brigade comes in because at the moment they're fairly equal, but that third brigade is another five regiments so and some further artillery as well so. Um, Okay, so let me just quickly go over the scenario rules and then we'll crack on with the first turn. Okay, so in terms of the battlefield and, and the, and the uh, scenario victory conditions, um, so the, basically we've got quite open ground here. So these areas here are open ground. The, the trees delineate light woods. So at the moment, uh, as you can see, most of uh, Rosecrans' units are in light woods. Sanborns is just going into the uh, open area here. All of um, Price's army is in light woods, and that's delineated again by this area here. This is open ground. Light woods uh, confer some benefits, so um, they're not, if you're in the light woods and you've been shot at, you're not a clear target. Art, you, you don't get a morale save against artillery fire, but you still get your, uh, your morale save plus one 
for uh, any musketry. Um, in terms of the actual victory conditions, oh, it's also rough ground, so if you're moving through light woods, it's half movement. And again, I halve my, my ranges anyway, so uh, infantry move six, so you're moving three if you're in the light woods. And victory conditions, very straightforward. Basically, Confederates um, have got to hold, uh, well, they're attacking anyway. So for the Union, they've got to basically break through here and hold this junction. So if there's an unshaken unit regiment on this junction and the army is broken, so if the Confederates are broken, um, then that is a victory for the Union. Um, so, yeah, quite not, not impossible for the Union to do, but clearly if the Confederates can be aggressive and attack and push the Union back, it's going to make it very hard for them to get anything onto this junction. Um, it suggests in the book that uh, the game lasts no longer than seven turns. So as I say, there are some reinforcements coming on in turn three for the Union, and they'll come on from this side here. Okay, so that's it. So we'll get on to the first turn, which will be for Price and the Confederates. Okay, so that's the end of turn one for the Confederates. So a fair bit of movement. Um, starting over on the right flank here, Herbert managed to get his um, side of his brigade up. Um, get three moves through the woods, but as you can see, you don't make much progress through the woods with being rough ground. Um, he also managed to get his two artillery batteries up the road, um, so that, don't, that doesn't actually hinder their movement. So he just did one move so they could unlimber and fire, because in American Civil War uh, rules you can't shoot if you've moved more than once. So we want to try and get some early shots off at the Union lines. And then um, Price himself got the three regiments from the other half of um, Herbert's Brigade moving, but again, not very far, just got one move off in the, in the woods, so they just crept a bit forward. And then um, Martin's Brigade wasn't particularly a good move at all. Um, luckily, they're all in March column because he, he, he failed his order, basically. So they just got their one free move up through the woods. So, OK start for the Confederates, but they've got to get cracking. They've only got seven turns. And as I said, the reinforcements coming on turn three for the Union. Um, but we've got a bit of shooting, so let's go over to that. Right, so the Confederates have opened up with the artillery onto the Union lines. Um, so these two artillery uh, units, you've got one unit of howitzers. Um, so they get basically two dice at every range, and you've got a unit of uh, smoothbores. So they're both at long range, um, so they're minus one to hit, and also um, aiming at either the deployed artillery or this regiment here, which should be in line of sight. Um, they're both not clear targets, one because they're deployed and one because they're in the woods. So going to go after the artillery because do a bit of counter battery fire try and weaken the union uh, line by getting rid of their artillery so we'll do the howitzers first there's two dice hitting on sixes no and then one dice for the smooth bore on a six no so didn't think that would get anywhere but there we go so that's the end of turn one for the confederates over to union turn one okay so that's the end of turn one movement for the, the uh, union so on this right flank here sullivan had a good roll, he got three moves, so he managed to get his uh, whole brigade out of the woods and deployed into a gun line, and his artillery's deployed as well. Over in the centre here, um, actually Rosecrans went first to get his headstrong uh, roll, so he got plus one to his roll, which did help because he rolled quite high. So he managed to still get a move off, so the artillery just moved up and handled, and the his two units here just moved across here. And then unfortunately Sanborn uh, failed his roll, so they just stuck there. Okay, so we've got a bit of shooting on turn one for the Union, so back for that. Okay, so the, it's a classic counter-battery action now from the Union, so they're, also these are howitzers as well, so these are 12-pounder howitzers. So they're actually, because they've shuffled up now, they are actually in medium range, so they're not getting anybody fires for distance, um, but they are shooting at the deployed artillery, and they're going to go after their cousins over here, this, these howitzers, so it's going to be minus one because they're deployed. So it's going to be two shots because of howitzers, and hitting on a five. Didn't matter anyway. Okay, so first opening shots of the... Uh, Battle have now occurred on turn one, so over to Confederates, turn two. Okay, so it's end of movement on turn two for Confederates. Uh, again, creeping forward. Um, Price here managed to, again, just get one move up with his, uh, his three uh, regiments here, but that does put them into uh, musket range of, of the Union lines there. They've got rifled muskets, so they're just within. Um, again, Martin's brigade, he's rolling, he's getting his rolls, but just about, so they managed to start to move across towards the centre. Remembering the Union have got to take this uh, crossroads to uh, this junction here to win. So he's just moving his brigade across here. And then on the right flank over here, Herbert's brigade, his part of the brigade, the three regiments here. Again, just trying to fan out a little bit to create a gun line. Um, that front regiment now is, in, is within uh, musket range of that unit there. So, and the artillery stayed where they were. So, yep, bit of progress for the Confederates, just trying to push up the line 
make it more difficult for the Union to break through. Okay, so we have got some shooting across the line, so let's come back for that. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, Confederate line has erupted with fire. So we'll start down on this, on this left flank here. So this unit of um, light infantry is going to shoot across at uh, this regiment here. So they're getting three dice, hitting on fours. Um, but they are sharpshooters, so they get to re-roll one of these dice. Good job too. That's pretty poor rolling. No, no hits at all. That's a disappointment for the Confederates. Okay, and the regiment here is going to shoot across at this one here. So again, three dice, but no re-rolls on this one, just hitting on fours. Just the one, and that is a disorder. And they go four to save, which they do make. So pretty lacklustre shooting from the Confederate on this Confederates on this left flank here. Just one disorder coming onto the line. So we'll come across the centre for the artillery now. Okay, so as the uh, the only target really is that, that artillery, they're both going to go after it. Um, and because they're now in medium range, they're both getting two dice anyway, hitting on fives. So I'll roll them all together. So we've got four dice here, hitting on fives. Two hits and a disorder. That's good. And it's minus two because they're at medium range and also howitzers anyway. So they're going to need sixes to save here, otherwise they're going to be shaken. They do make one. Well done. So, so there's one casualty on them, but they are disordered. I'll put a mark on in a second. And then we'll come across this right flank. Okay, so these are shooting across here, so they're hitting on fours, three dice, no rerolls. Two hits and a disorder, it's a bit better on this side, and two saves of four required. No, so that's two casualties. Okay, that's okay. so this right flank's uh, redeemed the, the Confederate line for now, so let's put disorder on there. Okay, so that's the end of shooting on turn two, and that's the end of turn two actually for the Confederates. So, yep, yeah, some... First shots coming across, making some casualties on the Union line, but not a huge amount um, coming through on that right flank there. So, okay, so let's see what the Union can do on turn two. Right, so that's the end of turn two movement for the Union. So Rosecrans um, went first again, being headstrong, and this time managed to get his two regiments that he's controlling out into the firing line here. Um, so yeah, they'll be able to get some fire back. The obviously artillery st stayed where they were because they were disordered. Unfortunately, Sanborn couldn't support. He was going to try and see if he could move a couple of these regiments out onto the flanks, but failed his order. And again, on this flank here, Sullivan also failed his order, so no movement on the right flank of the Union. So, yeah, again, just creeping forward, but um, there, there was going to be a bit more shooting now, so we'll come back for that. Okay, so after taking that first salvo from the Confederates, the Union line is now erupted. So we'll start down on this flank here. So this unit here is going to shoot across here, so that's going to be three dice. Shooting dice hitting on fours, no re-rolls. Just the one hit and a four save. Note, so that is a casualty on this unit here. Let's put that on there, one new casualty there. And then we've got the the artillery here will shoot across this, this as well. They are within half range, so it's going to be two shots hitting on fours. That is one hit, it's minus two to save, so it's going to be a six up. Note, so that is another casualty onto them. And then these unit here, now these are disordered, so they're going to be hitting on fives, shooting at these guys here. That is one hit and a disorder, not bad. And then a four up save. They do make it, but these are disordered as well. Okay, so we'll come across to the centre. Okay, so this howitzer battery is going to fire at this howitzer battery. Now again, because they're disordered, it's minus one, but also because they're deployed, it's minus one, so it can be two shots, hitting on sixes. No. Okay, so then we'll come over to this uh, left flank of the Union. Okay, so Rosecrans has given the order to shoot. So we've got again, three dice hitting on fours. They're not in close range yet, so just on fours again. Wow, brilliant. Three hits and a disorder. Three saves of four required. That's going to be good shooting. Clearly inspired by the boss. Okay, so that's one, uh, two casualties. And they're also disordered. But also, um, this small unit here is also in range, so they're going to shoot across here. Now they are, because they can't see all of the unit, they can't see more than half, they are um, not a clear target. So it's, again, it's going to be two dice, because it's a small unit, hitting on fives. No, okay, they're trying to get them to shake. Okay, so that's some good shooting from the Union, I guess. Um, so the lines have really started to uh, close. So let's see what turn three brings for the Confederates. Right, so that's the end of movement on turn three for the Confederates. So, um, Price here, just moved one regiment through the lines here just to get a bit better shooting angles and also because this unit was disordered. Just trying to put a bit, again, just trying to squeeze the Union back a little bit and keep pressure on them. Remember, they've got to break through and get to that centre line. Um, Martin's Brigade just shuffled around a bit further, just to, again, just to hedge the bets, want to see where the action's going to go. 
This is really now the, uh, the second line for the Confederates. And then over on the right flank there, Herbert's brigade, or part of the brigade he's controlling anyway, managed to get a good move. These moved once, so they can still shoot, and the small regiment just moved around the flanks. So really trying to extend the line um, and get as much firepower onto the Union line as possible. Okay, so let's come up for some shooting. Okay, so uh, fire erupting along the Confederate line on turn three. By the way, uh, I had a problem with the, the video. So this unit had actually fired, so they got a disorder onto this unit here. And also, um, Price had uh, rallied off a casualty as well. But anyway, so we're into the shooting phase. They've, shoot, they've shot. Um, so now it's the regiment here, firing across here. Three dice hitting on fours. Just the one hit and a four save which they do make. Okay, so again, this left flank not proving too effective in terms of um, casualties, but you know, there's they've, uh, a long way to go yet. And then we got to come over to the center for the artillery. Okay, so uh, Confederates really hoping they can take this artillery out on this turn now. They've got, again, four dice hitting on fives. Ah, oh, that's terrible. No hits at all. So that Union artillery battery has just seen a few uh, Cannibals whistle over their heads, but anyway, okay, so we'll move over to the right flank. Okay, so the Confederates here, now they're both are going to be shooting at this target here because they are the closest, and because these are more than 50%, you know, they can see more than half, um, then they're still a clear target, so they're going to have to go after them. So we'll do the regiment here. Now these are disordered, so they're going to be hitting on fives. That's one hit and a disorder, and one save of four. No, so that is a casualty on that front unit. So we'll just make a note of that. And also they are disordered. And then this unit here will also fire down. So again, three shots hitting on fours. Two hits and then two saves of four required. Oh, keep in the tray, Chris. Yeah, so one further casualty. Okay, these can't shoot because they're out of range. Okay, so yeah. Um, Slow progress, I think, for the Confederates, not making much uh, inroads in terms of casualties, but again, the Union have still got to try and break through. So, but it's turn three for the Union, and their third brigade will be turning up, so let's go and look at that. Okay, so that's the end of turn three movement for the Union. As you can see on this right flank here, Sullivan again has failed to move. That's, that's two turns in a row now he's failed his order. Um, so really not helping out in terms of trying to break this line. Um, but the third brigade has now arrived. As you can see, it's quite a big one, another five regiments and two and a six-gun battery um, under mower. But again, you're going to take a bit of time to get through these woods here. So um, managed to get just onto the table on this turn. So it's going to be a couple of turns away from helping out, if, if at all. Um, so Rosecrans took the initiative, um, decided to be headstrong. So he, he went first again and just started to order all the units around. So he ordered this one through here. They, they made their passage of lines check. So they've moved right up into close range, one move. He ordered this regiment here to move around to here. And then he moved that regiment right around to this flank here. Though that's made two moves, so I can't shoot. Um, oh, no, it wasn't one move. Yeah, that was one move. So they can shoot. So the whole line now is ready. And then finally, uh, Sanborn just managed to rally off a casualty here. So Rosecrans really taking the initiative on this left flank, trying to push through. Um, time is pressing. So um, let's get over to some shooting. As you can see, the smoke is thickening on the battlefield as the Union line erupts again. So we'll start down on this edge here with this unit here. It is disordered, so it's going to be three dice hitting on fives, targeting these. Nothing there. Okay, and then we'll have the, the artillery firing again. Um, although these are closer, they're not, they're, they can't see all of them, so they're not a clear target. So they're going to ignore them for this one here. So there's going to be two dice again hitting on fours. That's one hit and a save of six required because it's minus two. Notes, they're up to two casualties. And then this unit here is going to fire across here on fours. Just the one hit and save of four required. No, so that's another casualty there. Okay, so again, not too much damage going in, but um, yeah, chip damage away. So we're over to the center. Right, so now can this, this um, Union artillery do some damage over here? So again, it's going to be the howitzer fighting it against the howitzer. So it's going to be two dice hitting on fives. That's the one hit, and it's going to be minus two, so that's a six up save. Oops, that's a three, so that is um, that is a casualty. So a little bit of revenge there for the artillery. And then what we've got going on here, so we've got this unit here that's disordered firing across. Uh, sorry, this one here, sorry, firing, and they're at close range. So that's three dice, and that's going to be hitting on threes because they're at close range. 
That was really important, I think. Only one hit, that's disappointing. Save a four, but if they fail this, they will be shaken. Ah, oh, they make it, so that was a bit disappointing from the, uh, those troops there. So over to the Zouaves uh, regiment here, flying across here. So again, three dice hitting on fours. Two hits, two disorders, and two saves of four. So the casualty and a disorder coming on to here. And then this small unit here, again, is in close range. Um, so they'll be firing on threes. Two hits and a disorder, and then two saves of four. Just the one, so casualty again, and another disorder. So plenty of disorder and uh, casualties coming across the line on this left flank. So the Union <coughs> seem to be pressing forward. But um, yeah, over to turn four for the Confederates. Let's see what they can do. Okay, not too much going on in the movement for turn four for the Confederates. So Price down here, try to basically just try, his, his line's okay, so just try to rally off a casualty, uh, but failed his order. Um, so the Brigade Commander here, Martin, sent round one of his regiments here. So basically uh, Price can now pick that uh, unit up in terms of orders for next turn and basically strengthen his line. Um, and then he took his other three regiments from his brig uh, brigade just across to the center here. So Confederates just shoring up the center here bringing a bit of support across for the general. And on the right hand side here, um, uh, Herbert's brigade, the rest of his brigade, um, he failed his order as well. He was gonna try and rally off that casualty but failed his order. Okay, so again, back over to some shooting. Okay, so turn four shooting starts for the Confederates. Um, and by the way, I just wanted to clarify as well, I, I had considered charging in here with this unit here, but as, as they had two casualties, um, charging's hard enough in, in uh, American Civil War black powder, um, because you, get, um, you have to be ordered and you get a minus to charging to the front. Um, and also having two casualties, they're very close to being shaken already. So I just want to try and ensure they stay in the battle as long as possible. So anyway, across down here. So this unit's gonna open up um, again on, on this unit here. So it's gonna be three dice. We're rolling one for sharpshooter. Excellent, that's four, uh, three hits, uh, three saves of four required but they make all the saves. It's a real stalemate down this bottom end of the, the uh, on this left flank here. So again, this unit's gonna open up on here. Three dice on fours, just the one. Can they get a casualty? Finally, come on. They do, okay, there's a casualty. Right, so finally some, some unions uh, have been hit a little bit anyway. So as you said, bit, bit of a stalemate down here. So we'll go across to the center. Okay, so again, it's going to be four dice because they're hitting, all hitting on fives. Can they finally do something to uh, knock this unit and artillery out of the, the game? So four dice, fives. There's two hits there. Right, this could be bad news. So that's one disorder as well. So it'll be two saves of six. No, so that means they are at three. So they are over their stamina. So they're shaken as well. So they will be testing um, at the end of the shooting phase uh, to be taking a break test, which is what the uh, Confederates wanted. Okay, let's go over to the uh, right flank of the Confederate line. Right, we might as well start down this end here. So this unit here has got two dice. It's a small unit, but it's disordered. So it's gonna be hitting on fives, uh, sorry, fours, because it's in close range. So plus one, minus one. And this is anyway. Then we've got this uh, regiment here firing across. Again, they are also disordered, so hitting on fives. Just the one and its order. So the four, which they do make, but these swaths are disordered. And then we've got this close range action here. So again, three dice hitting on threes. That's more like it. That's what the union were trying to do. And let's see if they can make any saves. They do make two though. So again, firepower coming in, but not a huge amount of casualties coming across the line. But you know, it's turn four, the Union haven't made much progress the last couple of turns, and uh, everybody's getting bogged down a little bit in just uh, a shooting match, which tends to be what happened in the Civil War. So um, so let's see what the Union can do and what Rosecrans can see if he can inspire his units to do something else in turn four. Uh, hold my horses, I forgot about the break test here. So, uh, so that artillery needs to make a break test. It's two dice, minus one for being disordered, one for being one over its stamina, and one for being causing casualties via artillery. So it's two dice minus three. So three minus three is three. So they're breaking, so that uh, artillery unit is destroyed. So the Confederates have got a, a, a victory there. So um, yeah, okay, well that's a blow for the Union. So let's see what they can do in turn four. Okay, so that's the end of a 
uh, an interesting turn of movement for the union. So uh, Rosecrans went first again, but we'll come back to him once again. Um, Sullivan's brigade failed his order. That's three turns in a row now. So really, he's going to be fired at the end of this battle, I think. Um, Moa's brigade got uh, three moves up through the woods. They're starting to drift towards the centre for obvious reasons. But you can see how slow progress is going to be. It's going to be at least another couple of turns before they get into the firing line at least. And that's if it keeps rolling well. But anyway, Rosecrans again took the initiative um, and tried to get some charges off, which he succeeded. So he got a charge off here with this unit here, although they were shaken by closing fire. But I think he's feeling like he's got to get on with it now. He also managed to bring up some supports as well. So really using that headstrong rule where you get that plus one. Um, these were disordered, and again he ordered this um, small unit to charge in, which they did. They took up one, one casualty on closing fire. So this left flank now, we've got some hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Union are keen to get onto it and break through uh, this right flank of the uh, Confederate lines. Um, so yeah, so we'll come back for some shooting. Okay, so back down to this right flank of the Union. So again, three dice hitting on fours. This is a bit of deja vu for the whole battle so far. So where are we? One, just the one hit. Um, can they just, can they shake them though? No, so no casualties. So can this artillery do something? So two shots hitting on fours. One hit, one save of six required. This could be the one. It is. So this unit is now shaken. Um, so that's something. And then we've got, um, although uh, price is attached, you only roll six and he's a casualty if it's over um, the stamina, which is not at the moment. And then we've got the three dice here hitting on fours. Okay, two hits and a disorder, two saves of four required. That's another casualty onto these guys and also disorder. So, okay, not too bad actually. So the first shaken unit over this side um, and we'll come across here for a bit of shooting over here. Okay, so these wives are shooting in here. Um, they are disordered, so it's gonna be a minus one, so three dice on fives. Okay, there's two hits, two saves of four required. That's yeah, we're giving that. Okay, so no, no casualties there. Okay, so that's the end of shooting. So um, let's get down to the uh, the hand to hand though. So back for that. Right. So both regiments have got six hand to hand dice. So the Union charged in, so they get plus one, but they are shaken, so it's minus one. So it's gonna be six dice hitting on fours. So that's three hits for the Union, and then the Confederates again have got six dice, and they're going to be also hitting on fours three for them as well so pretty even so far let's see how the saves go so the union got three saves of four to make oh, okay so it's two casualties for the union and how do the confederates get on just the one okay so um so that means the, the union got two casualties so they're going to be two over their stamina the confederates become shaken because they've got one um but they won the combat uh, by one as well so the uh Union will be testing, so we'll do that now. Uh, apologies, I had a slight problem with the footage there, so um, but I did roll a four for the roll there, so minus one is a three, so they did break that unit. And by the way, they were supported, but they were these were supported as well, so to be honest, they cancelled each other out, so I must remember supports. I always forget supports, anyway. Um, but that unit has broken, so uh, that's a blow for the Union, but um, they're trying to be aggressive and get on with things. Um, so yeah, uh, so we'll come down for this hand-to-hand -hand combat here. Right, so because these are small units, they've both got four dice each, combat dice, so the Union charged in, so they're going to be hitting on threes. That's two hits, no disorder in hand-to-hand. -hand. And then for the Confederates, on fours, three hits. Okay, interesting. Okay, so these are the saves for the Union, on fours. All saved. And then for the Confederates, one casualty. Okay, then they are, that means they are shaken. We'll just change that over. So, um, yeah, so they lost that by one. So they're going to be testing. Uh, but they're going to hold. Okay, so that's the end of the of turn four for the Union. Pretty good turn. Um, they've managed to get into combat. Obviously lost that one there, but they, they've been aggressive. They're getting up there, trying to get a bit of um, breakage on this line. So we've come up to turn five now. So the Confederates are doing okay. So let's see how we get on for turn five. Okay, so that's the end of turn five movement for the Confederates, and not a lot has happened. Pretty poor 
round of command roles from all the commanders across the across the board. And also, I noticed that Herbert's brigade, which although Price is controlling some of the regiments there, um, he actually has got three regiments shaken. So there's one down here that's shaken. Um, there's two over on this flank that is now shaken. So there's only actually one regiment off being broken. So uh, try to start to rally. Um, Price rolled really high, didn't rally his uh, regiment off there. Herbert, again, he failed his re role as well, so didn't fail to uh, join that unit and rally a casualty. So the Confederates are actually potentially quite shaky now on this uh, turn after, because they've got three shaken units, and the, the yeah, there's not a lot I can do about that at this stage. Um, just here, Martin just got one of his units to just come into line, just to start getting themselves ready for potential breakthrough from the from the Union. So yeah, so actually the, the Confederates are a bit more precarious than I considered, um, but there we go. So let's see how they got on. Got some shooting and a bit of hand to hand to come. Right, we'll start down here with this light infantry shooting across again at this unit here. Um, get to do any damage on them, so let's see if they can do something. But they are shaken, so they're hitting on fives. But they are re-rolling one. What a terrible roll that was as well. Okay, okay, that one hit. Okay, let's see how this goes on four. Yes, they make it anyway, so still nothing. And again, this unit's uh, disordered, so again, hitting on fives. Nothing at all. Okay. Um, now these artillery batteries here have got a line of sight to this unit here, but they're not a clear target. So they are going to be hitting on fives, and I believe they're, they are just in medium range. So it's two shots uh, each. Um, so yeah, that's hitting on fives. So that is one hit and disorder, and it's in four, becomes a six, because it's at medium range. No, so that is a casualty, and they are disordered. Okay, and then we'll go over to this flank here. Okay, so this uh, unit here again is in close range, so uh, normally hitting on threes, but the shaken, so back to fours. That is two hits. Now this could be interesting because these are already at two casualties. Two saves of four required. Just the one, so they're now shaken. I'll come back and put a mark on that. Okay, and then we've got the unit down here, point across at the Zwarves. And fours, just the one hit and save of four required. No, so that is a casualty onto the Zwarves here. Okay, so that's the end of shooting. So, uh, yeah, this unit's now shaken. I'll put a mark on that. So let's come back for some hand to hand. Okay, so this fight here. So, in the last round, the Union won, so they've got plus one to their roll, and this unit's shaken, so they're going to be hitting on fives. So we'll do that first. Four dice. Not one hit for the Confederates, that's not good news. And these are going to be hitting on threes. That's the two. Let's see what the Confederates could do. Can they save these though? They can't. Okay, so that is two casualties. So they're two over their stamina because um, they're already shaken. So they lost by two. So I need to do all two dice uh, and it's minus two. So a nine becomes a seven. So they're going to hold again. So despite being shaken, they're just hanging in there, uh, but the Union have won that con combat again, so they're going to be, again, getting that bonus for the next round. Okay, so that's the end of turn five for the Confederates. Um, not a lot of damage really across the line. I guess they've got a shaken unit here for the Union, but it um, feels like if, if this unit over here, can, this brigade can get in somewhere, they could get a breakthrough. Um, but there's only a couple of turns to go, so let's see how we get on in turn five for the Union. Okay, so that was the end of a fairly interesting command and movement phase for the Union. So again, Rosecrans took the initiative, being headstrong, and used that to his advantage really well, actually. So he managed to get that Zouave's unit to charge in. Um, and they didn't take any casualties on closing fire, which was a bit of luck. Um, but that means he's now tied of that whole left flank there. Um, he tried to get this unit at the front here to charge in through that unit there that was shaken. Uh, but they, they got the order off. They failed their passage of lines, so they got stuck at the front there. But it did mean that he was able to then uh, rally off a casualty on that unit there to take the shaken marker off. So in some respects, it's been a really good turn here because he's managed to get tie up some more Confederates in combat. He's, he's taken that shaken marker off, so just really steadying that brigade. Um, so yeah, that was good. And then over here, finally, finally, uh, Sullivan managed to do something. So as you can see, there's a big gaping hole here. He managed to get two of his regiments to steam up the field here towards the Confederates, not to charge in, but obviously they're in close range now for some shooting. Um, again, tried to get these Zwarves to move through, but they failed their passage of lines. 
So they just got to the front there and then he blundered and this unit moved over here. So suddenly his whole brigade is kind of spread out. So he's positioned himself here just so he can get some orders for next turn. But at least got some movement now for on this right flank, which is what they need. And again, Moe's brigade is really struggling to get through these woods quickly. Um, I'm not sure if they're even going to get involved in this battle at this, t at this time, but they got, they got one move basically through, um, but very slowly. So, um, yeah, we need uh, I think the Union needs Sullivan and Rosecrans to really bring this home. So let's see how they get on in some shooting. Right, let's start on this uh, right flank for the Union. Now, these can't shoot this turn because they move more than once, but they're obviously you know, in an aggressive position there. Um, but the artillery can shoot, so they're going to fire across again at this unit here that's shaken. So this, they really want to try and get some more damage on here. So again, two shots hitting on fours. That's one, so you need a six. This will be, if they fail this, they'll be testing. Oops, <laughs> they make it. I'm going to give it that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. Well done. Um, uh, so this unit here, three shots on fours. Just the one. And again, this could uh, this could be interesting. I need that four? No. So I do believe I'll have to check. We'll come across the line in a second, but that could mean that brigade is now broken, and that's a major. That could be a major position now for the uh, Union. Let's see. So we're just going across here for this uh, shooting over this flank. Yeah, I've just counted it up. So yes, now. Um, so basically, uh, Herbert's brigade is now got four shaken units. So we've got one here one here, one there, and one there. So they are broken. So we'll do the shooting, but that does mean that this whole front line of the, the Confederates are gonna be withdrawing on the next turn. So the Union have made that breakthrough. We've got some combats obviously to do, and we've got to do the shooting, but in terms of the next turn, um, that uh, Confederate Brigade is, is gonna be retiring. Okay, let's do the shooting here. So we've got three shots hitting on threes, because we're in close range, and also their sharpshooter, they'll be rolling one but don't need it, they're all hits, and they are disordered as well. And then got three saves of four to come. Two casualties, so they're gonna be testing. Um, so we'll do that now. So it's gonna be two dice, minus two for the casualties, and minus one, another one for the disorder. So two dice minus three. So a seven becomes a four, so they're broken anyway. So that regiment breaks and flees the field anyway. Um, okay, right, let's come back from the hand to hand. Actually, a slight addendum. Um, they didn't, because it's in shooting, they become whipped, which is obviously the American Civil War rule instead of um, unit breaking, but they are part of a broken brigade anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But technically, they're not, they don't leave the field, they're just whipped, so they move back. And uh, I won't explain all the whip rules, but um, they're still basically in play. But uh, as I say, the brigade is actually broken anyway. So let's do this hand to hand, see what happens. We'll start down. Uh, with the Zwarves, so they're hitting on threes because they charged in. Uh, six attacks. Uh, that is four hits for the Union. And then six attacks back for the Confederates uh, on fours. Brilliant roll. That's five hits for the Confederates. So we'll do the saves for the Union. So on fours. All saved. Wow, that was a cracking roll there from the uh, Zwarves. Obviously up for the fight, and then fours for the Confederates. Not so much. Okay, so that's uh, three casualties, uh, which means they are shaken, and they're one over their stamina, so they've lost the fight. So let's see what happens. So it's going to be two dice, minus uh, uh, three. Yeah, two dice minus three. So that's uh, eight becomes a five, so they will be retiring, but as I say, they are broken anyway. So do that one next, and then we'll come over to these guys. So again, we've got four dice for the Union, and they won the combat, so they're hitting on threes. Just two. And then four back for the Confederates on fives, because they're shaken. And two as well, okay. So two saves of four for the Union. Both, and two saves of four for the Confederates. Both, okay, so that's... Um, that's a draw, so they will be testing because they're shaken. So we'll try that again. And they're broken as well, so that they would have, they're actually destroyed because it's hand to hand. Okay, so let me tidy the board up and we'll just come back for a quick uh, wrap up of that. Okay, so I'm going to call the game, con maybe controversially, but I think, so 
what we've got a situation is we've got this whole brigade, this whole line of the Confederates is now broken um, and it's going to start retreating. Now, technically, I think I'd, in my own mind, uh, to break the Confederate army, because there's two brigades, I've always thought you should break both um, to be able to win the game. But actually, I think based on the, what happened historically at Ayuka, the Confederates did retreat eventually from, from there, from the Union. And if you think about how I've been playing it, Price has been really you know, engaged in the whole battle. He's been down here on the front lines. I mean, he's actually still attached to this unit here that's now broken. And if you look at the rules for broken brigades and, and the commanders, they can no longer give orders. And I think it's probably a little bit unfair to say that he can suddenly now then just come off this and just wander over here and support Martin's brigade. So if your general's retiring off the field, um, then I don't think Martin will be hanging around either. So, uh, and also the Union are in a, you know, now in a good position. You've got to think Sullivan's brigade has been is now in a good position. All these units are now going to move backwards and come off the board. The, art the artillery are going to retire as well because they're part of that brigade. Rosecrans, who's been an absolute star, I think, that headstrong rule has really helped to support this left flank and he's really kept it going, um, eventually you know, being the catalyst for that break. So, you know, then they, they can just now sweep around here as well. You've got Moe's Brigade completely fresh coming through the, the woods here. So I think, you know, you could see that, I think that's probably fair to say that the Union have, have won the day. And um, despite the heroics of the Confederate line here to hold on. So yeah, so I'm going to call the game. I think that's a Union victory. Good, I really enjoyed that. Uh, good scenario. Um, I think the... I really like using the commanders like this. I thought it was quite fun, actually, giving them a trait and also getting them involved in the action. Um, you know, Rosecrans really was just leading the line here. That extra pip of um, leadership you get for going first was really helping this uh, Union left flank out. Didn't get to use Price's aggressive rule, which is a shame. But I think it, on balance, because Sullivan's brigade was all was bogged down for like, what, three turns? You know, it just felt probably better to kind of just hold this line and try and get the fire on. Unfortunately, for two turns, he, he didn't manage to rally off this troop here. So, so that was pretty poor rolling from the command perspective. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a better option than try and just charge forward and potentially then give uh, Sullivan an option to charge back, etc. So yeah, overall, a good scenario. I think the, the woods are a little bit limiting. I think I might have played that slightly differently because you know, Moa's not really got anywhere, to be honest. Um, because I reduced my ranges to three inches even with a three, uh, if, you, if you pull off three moves on a command roll, you're only moving nine inches. So I probably would have looked at that slightly different, seeing the distance they've got to get through to get into the line up here. Um, but yeah, no, good scenario. Really enjoyed that one. Lots to go on. Lots of action all across the board. Nice to see some hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's not always easiest to get uh, for American Civil War games, but um, I think with that uh, headstrong rule, definitely got the option for doing that so okay guys so i hope you enjoyed that um thanks for all the support and comments as usual thanks for all the support the channel gets um and uh yeah i'll see you all soon for the next one thanks <laughs>